Well, I want to turn now to Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russia controls 20% of his entire country. He also says the Donbass is almost entirely destroyed. Russia has vowed to, quote, liberate the region on behalf of pro-Russian separatists. It's now focusing its offensive on capturing Severodonetsk. Ukraine has lost at least 80% of the city, but says it has no plans to withdraw its troops. Mr. Zelensky says it's not that just the territory that Russia is trying to steal, but also Ukraine's children. He says more than 200,000 children have been deported to Russia so far, many of them sent to remote areas. CNN can't independently verify that number. Let's get more now from CNN's Melissa Bell in Odessa, Ukraine. And Melissa, that is just an absolutely staggering number. The fact that the Ukraine's president has come out and said 200,000 Ukrainian children have been deported to Russia. What more can you tell us? That's right. I mean, there is, there has been in this part of the world, and uh, an old Soviet-era policy of those kind of mass population deportations. As you say, we have no means of verifying those figures because that 20 percent of Ukraine that President Zelensky says is now in Russian hands as a part of the country that the free press simply doesn't have access to. It isn't just the Western media. It's very difficult for Ukrainian journalists now to be working there. Those we've spoken to uh, will not speak on camera. They're extremely worried uh, about any communications out. And these last couple of days we've seen an entire communications blackout and of course that is of extreme concern to Ukraine because uh, when you look at that territory now uh, under Russian control the fear is that that line could harden and that has an impact of course not just for those Ukrainians who are trying to get uh, north of that line uh, back into those parts of the country controlled by Kyiv but also we found for some of those Ukrainians trying to get back to their homes in some of the cities that they've been fleeing these last few weeks as a result of the violence. Alive and safe, but stuck in Zaporizhia. Some of the families that fled the Russian bombings of southern Ukraine. Others have just found themselves on the wrong side of a line that has hardened. Some of these families, now living in their cars, have been here for weeks. Olena Babak came from the Black Sea town of Skadovsk to buy medicine for her elderly parents. She's now living with others in the open air. Look, she says, he's just had surgery. My husband's without a leg. This grandmother is recovering from a stroke. I can hardly sit, she says. My legs are swollen. Can I just get back to her son, or is this some kind of cruel joke? Please, just let me die in her son, at home. Some of the families bringing their anger to Zaporizhia's regional administrative building. What's the problem? Why? Like Alexei Ismailov, who fled Mariupol with his wife, but has had no contact with the rest of his family for three months. They, they still stay in Mariupol. And during uh, three months, I don't have any contact. What happened with my father, with my sister? I like to come back and help. I, I like to bring them to Ukrainian. Marina Natanova, who's in charge of social services for the greater Zaporizhia region, says humanitarian aid has been hard to bring because her teams to the south of the city are now without communications. She tells us that it will also be necessary to tell those trying to return of the dangers they face. It's very dangerous there, she says, so this will be discussed with them at this new filtration camp to find out why they want to go and whether they understand the risks. She says that beyond the water already being provided here, there will soon be a medical center, showers and a room for mothers and children. For now, these families wait, just hungry to get home. Linda, beyond uh, the fighting and, of course, the extraordinary cost to civilians so far of this war, uh, there is uh, an entire country, really, of lives interrupted. Uh, the fighting age men are obliged to stay in Ukraine. Millions have had to flee. And there are, of course, all those uh, civilian deaths that have yet to be properly counted, notably in cities like Mariupol, where we now are getting a picture of tens of thousands of civilians possibly having died in those first few months of the war. Very difficult to confirm the figures because that city is tonight in Russian hands, Linda.
Yeah. Almost 100 days into this war, still learning details about some of the atrocities which happened in some of those cities. I want to ask you about uh, what the president said in terms of how much Russia now controls. President Zelensky said uh, Russia now controls 20 percent of Ukraine. Uh, Melissa, where do the battle lines lie right now? It is a long stretch uh, of a uh, line. Uh, President Zelensky today estimated it as about a thousand kilometers going from Kharkiv down to Mykolaiv. And essentially that line beyond the intense fighting that's happening around Severodonetsk, falling even now into Russian hands and cities like uh, Slovyansk that are under heavy Russian bombardment there in the Donbass. It is all along that line that uh, villages, for instance, south of Zaporizhia are being shelled. Uh, it is an important counteroffensive that is now underway, however, in the south of the country around Kherson. Bear in mind that this is the westernmost city. Uh, it is west of the Dnieper that happens to be in Russian hands so far. Ukrainian armed forces are trying to make the most of the fact that Russian forces seem to have concentrated their efforts and continue to do so on the Donbass to try and take some of those villages uh, that lie uh, to the east of the Dnieper River, really trying to cut off Russian forces there. That would be a big gain for Ukrainian armed forces. But again, for the time being, I think it is the fact of that 20 percent of the country being in Russian hands and along a continuous stretch of country with that hardened line uh, that is of particular concern. The worst case scenario for Ukrainians at the, this point is not simply that they don't manage to push that line back, but that that line should stand, Linda. All right, Melissa Bella, thanks to you and the team there in Odessa, Ukraine. We will speak again very soon. Well, still to come tonight, new warnings about a possible U.S. recession, even though one common feature of recession is missing. We'll discuss that next. Also ahead... That is the sound of a jubilant Johnny Depp fans outside the courthouse Wednesday as the verdict came in for his trial against